So I've had this 14 Pro Max since launch day, and this phone, believe it or not, has become increasingly difficult to get over the past couple months and still is right now. They'll pop up sometimes in stores and sometimes you'll be able to find some, but you know, they're, they're pushing back on production a little bit right now, but it should be picking up soon. And I want to talk about everything I've learned three months later with this phone. And by the end of this video, you're going to know if this is still something, if you haven't picked one up already, if you're considering one or waiting on one, if it was really worth getting or worth ordering. So stay tuned to the end of this video and you'll learn all about that. Okay, so has it been worth the price? So Apple kept the price the same on the 14 Pro Max. And I could say after my three months of usage, I do believe it's worth the price, mostly because they're still providing you with the premium build, stainless steel edges, beautiful camera setup really nice display it still really commands its price point now when it comes to its build and design qualities of it you know it really still feels like the past two years i don't really get excited when i pick this up because the 12 pro max felt the same and the 13 pro max felt the same i do really like the space black colorway i think it is very businessy very classy very clean and um, for those of you who want a black phone, a fully black phone, the back is still not fully black. It's like a dark gray, but at least inside the camera and on the edges, it's definitely more of a black colorway. The best one I've seen since the Jet Black. So I still want Apple to make a full black, kind of like Samsung does with their Phantom Black color options. But, you know, right here, this is going to be, you know, black enough for now. This is the option you're going to have on the 14 Pro Max. Overall, though, you know, the just the overall look and feel dynamic island definitely is important because every year you want to kind of separate the look and feel of iPhone to really let the people know that this is the new phone. And that's what this did right here. Other than that, though, it's really kind of hard to tell. Several months later, when it comes to the weight of the device, though, I will say that, you know, these ever increasing camera sizes, not a big fan of it, but I am a fan of the results that we are getting and I don't see this trend changing unless they can make the cameras just as good with smaller lenses, but you can definitely feel how top heavy these iPhones are getting. And definitely if you don't rock a case, it will definitely lean to one side because all of that weight is resting on that camera on the back. So you like a weighty phone, you'll really love the 14 Pro Max. It definitely has some nice weight to it. You could definitely feel it for sure. It feels premium in that aspect. I actually using the dynamic island. I have enjoyed it to a degree. I enjoy when I get calls and things pop up here and stuff like that. It is enjoyable to use, but over my three months, I don't really think it was a big enough differentiation to upgrade from, say, a 14 Pro Max or even a 12 Pro Max if you're looking for massive upgrades. And I, ask, I honestly still find it far more distracting you know, I, I haven't really got super used to it in terms of it standing out. It really does stick out like a sore thumb up there. You can re definitely really see this is very prominent. I, I just feel like the notch still faded out of the background a little bit more. And I do find myself as long as I'm not in a dark background on any of these applications, I do find myself kind of peeking at it a little bit more than I did the notch. So I don't really like that aspect. And I still dream of an all screen iPhone where it's just full screen. But, you know, we're a little bit of ways from that. But for now, has it really made the experience bad? Absolutely not. But it de definitely, it, it sticks out even more than a notch. So let me know your thoughts on Dynamic Island. On the whole, though, I do like that Apple did make it a feature on the iPhone 14 Pro Max because when you get calls and stuff like that, you could definitely take advantage of it. So at least it's not just sticking there and has no purpose. I do appreciate that about the phone. Now, always on display is something that's going to improve even more on the, you know, upcoming 16.2. So if you appreciate having always on display, there's going to be more customization with the always on display. And I got to say, when you are, you know, working on your computer or whatever, and you place this down on the table, or maybe you have this propped up in the car or whatever, you know, it's nice to just be able to quickly glance at stuff right there on the 14 Pro Max. I think the always on display has been pretty nice. Um, I talked about earlier how I didn't like how bright it got, but I'm going to let that go at this point because they are going to going to darken that in 16.2 coming up soon. So I'm not really concerned too much about that anymore. Now, three months later with the brightness, I will say the brightness on this phone is overkill. 
<laughs> look at me, look at this. Am I blinding you yet? No, it's overkill on this phone, it truly is. And I find that only in the brightest of sunlight when you're walking outdoors does it really make a major difference. Other than that, I constantly have it down and for the first time ever, I find myself at nighttime going into accessibility display and text size, scrolling down to the reduced white point because it's so bright, it, it just hurts my eyes at night. Honestly, it's just way too bright at nighttime. So I find myself constantly reducing the intensity of these bright colors. And um, that usually starts at around seven, eight o'clock at night. I start putting that on because honestly, it's just way too bright <laughs> at nighttime. So overkill, but in a good way, it's kind of like you don't really think about it much, but when you need it, it's awesome to have it. It's mostly very useful in direct sunlight. So that's something I wanted to mention about this. Other than that, the overall display several months later has been pretty fantastic. I mean, you can read text very sharp. It's wide enough so it doesn't feel like a skinny display. And honestly, you know, the images and everything else looks pretty darn good on this phone. So I'm very happy to report playing games and everything. Using this display panel is still a fantastic experience. Although there are mostly com competitors in basically every brand that has a phone size this big or bigger. So it's not like it's special to iPhone, but it still, it still works. And for some people, this is just far too big. You'll want to swing for the smaller 6.1 models. But for a lot of people like the increased battery life and the increased media experience, this is still going to be the way to go to go with the Max. Now, I want to quickly brush over the performance here. We are talking about the Apple A16 Bionic. So rock and video games, graphics will improve. Load times will improve. In addition, this A16 Bionic is incredibly efficient. So the back of the phone doesn't get too warm under heavy usage and stuff like that. For some reason, when I am, you know, giving it all this praise, it's taking forever to load asphalt. But honestly, when playing games on here, it's fantastic. The notch does get in the way. Did I say the notch? The dynamic island does get in the way a little bit when playing those games, though. So as you can see, it just sticks out there. And if you have a brighter screen, maybe in PUBG, it's a, night, it's a daytime mode, you will see it a little bit more. But everything just flies on here. It kind of feels like a little iPad Pro like experience in terms of in your pocket, really strong performance in everyday usage. So I will say, I think most people, this is a little bit overkill and I don't think a lot of people are going to be using, you know, video editing and stuff like that. But if you are doing things like this, you are rendering, you are, you know, using creativity applications, for example, along with gaming, this phone is heck is definitely worth your money for sure. So definitely you're really going to love that on here. I would put this akin to, it's kind of like having a M1 MacBook power or M2 in your pocket. It's not quite those chipsets, but it feels like it performs on the same level for a phone and it has six gigabytes of RAM. I think Apple could have upped this a little bit since, you know, it is the highest price phone, but I'm sure we'll see eight gigs in the future, although it doesn't seem to matter because iOS just kind of loads everything incredibly smooth. And when going through, you don't find any problems. However, I don't like how in the future iPhones don't typically perform as well when they first came out. So I'll be keeping an eye on this one over the next couple of years. Now, software on this phone is also quite interesting with the dynamic island. But other than that, it's still iOS. I still appreciate iOS's simplicity and not really have to having to do much. You can see app library does organize applications so you don't have to do it yourself. And just kind of the simplicity of just, just a home pages with just, you can add widgets and kind of move your pages around and make folders and stuff like that. Other than that, change your wallpaper. And obviously the lock screens is a big deal these days where you can customize those and you can link them to focuses and stuff like that. But you know, it's just a really good day-to-day -day phone that the software, and this goes for all the iPhones, it just works and you don't really, once you get used to it, you don't really think about it kind of fades into the background. Still appreciate that. And I appreciate the consistent update support that continues to be king on the iOS experience. So we're on 16.1.2, but I like how everybody gets at the same time. I could tell my wife, hey, we got an update and she can go update her iPhone as well. Now, storage options are pretty high on this phone, although I think they could have included a two terabyte option. I think that'll come soon. However, as you climb up in the storage on these iPhones, it really does become incredibly pricey by comparison to these more entry level 128 or 256 gig model capacity. So do keep in mind that 
There is great storage options, but it gets incredibly pricey at those higher tiers. So what I do is I just kind of offload what I don't need when it gets too full and then keep rocking out with the cheaper model. That's just my take. Now pushing it over to cameras here, I could go on and on. We talked about these enough. It's not like it's gonna change. They're still amazing. They got great macro modes. I will knock one thing. I don't like how this can only go 15X and I think Apple kind of screwed us here with the zoom on this one. I would have liked to seen more zoom on this phone. Honestly, at this money, you know, we're getting way more zoom on the S22 Plus, Ultra, S22 regular, Pixel, like everything is zooming better than this phone right now. Incredible video and cinematic modes though are really what stand out here and the raw modes can really take your pictures up a notch. And I think this does some of the best people photography out there. So if you like taking pictures of yourself or people, you're gonna really love the iPhone. Pro Max, and then also the front-facing camera, incredible. It really matches up on the back, and this is one of those phones where I'm leaving the camera at home. It's just like the Pixel. I just don't need to take the camera out. With this one, you're getting great results, and I really like that because nobody want, and not everybody wants to rock around with an official huge camera anymore. It's just not the thing to do. So definitely really like the cameras here. They're really getting close to maybe one day replacing your camera fully. Um, for a lot of people, it already has, but professional still not yet, but it's getting there. You know, it really is, I believe. Audio performance is something a few months later that still has stood out to me as something to mention. You know, three months later, I like how crisp and loud the speakers get on here. Not that they weren't good before, they were excellent before, but they're just uh, they're a smidge louder at this point. And this is something that if you want a phone that's loud and crispy, you'll definitely want this phone right here. And lastly, before I wrap things up, I do wanna talk about the phone call quality reception. I hardly ever see this thing without full strength. So you're looking really good on the phone call quality and reception as well. And how could I forget to talk about the battery life here before we wrap it up. The battery life started out really crappy by comparison to my 13 Pro Max, but these days it performs just like the 13 Pro Max. We're going more than a day to a day and a half of usage. So my final conclusion, after a few months of using the iPhone 14 Pro Max, if you're planning on ordering one, you're pre-ordering one, or you're waiting on one, I think you got a lot to look forward here. Great battery life, great cameras, premium build. And a few months later, I do find this model to be coming a little bit boring in terms of, you know, it kind of seems like the 12 Pro Max, 13 Pro Max, 11 Pro Max, with a little bit of tweaks here and there. So I do want to see Apple maybe do something a little bit more different. I'm not sure we'll see that right away. That's not really how they roll, but you know, maybe something a little bit more out of the ordinary in terms of like a redesign. That's kind of what I want to see here. Not just a dynamic island, but a full redesigned phone just to give us something a little bit newer. But other than that, Stephanie go here with the 14 Pro Max. And obviously with the popularity of this and being hard to find, I think a lot of people do agree. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that statement down below. And if you want to see my three months later on any of my other iPhones that I've reviewed already, let me know down below, including the 14, the 14 Pro, um, or even the upcoming will be like a three months and, and a month or so for the Pixel. So let me know on that one. I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well. Subscribe if you haven't already. And peace. Thank you.